Welcome to News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV for Thursday, October 18th, 2012. I'm Kristen Folletti. Your internet service provider could be monitoring you, and the Pirate Bay has made an important change to its infrastructure. Here now to discuss the future of file sharing is SiliconANGLE contributing editor John Casaretto. Welcome, John. Good morning. AT&T, Verizon, Comcast, and other major internet service providers are set to implement a copyright alert system aimed at cutting down on illegal peer-to-peer -peer file sharing of copyrighted material over the next several weeks. So what can you tell us about how the copyright alert system will work? Well, uh, what they've set up is a uh, system where they're essentially uh, sharing information. Uh, basically, uh, a couple of the major organizations, the motion picture, um, association, uh, um, RIAA, which is the recording industry, um, when they uh, become aware of uh, file sharing and they have a, a suspect, the uh, um, ISP has agreed to, to uh, share the information and aligning that with particular users. Um, so they've set that up and uh, they're going to have an alert system and kind of a re-education system, if you will. Um, so it's, it's pretty fascinating that uh, it's come to this, but uh, there's a number of internet service providers. Some of the major ones are out there that are um, supposedly a part of this. Now, how will a service provider be able to identify if peer-to-peer -peer sharing is taking place on someone's computer? Well, again, you know, they, they uh, commonly are out there on the networks looking for their, their property. Um, so if they detect a certain IP address um, is sharing their, their property, they're going to go to the ISPs at that point uh, through this system and try to align that with particular users um, and particular computers. Um, and that's really what, what this agreement really covers. So under this copyright alert system, what are the consequences if someone's caught sharing files? Well, that's pretty interesting because they're not all that severe. Um, basically, what the initial thing that they do is uh, um, officially, anyways, uh, they, they create what's called an alert. Um, basically, what they're doing is they have like an educational material that accompanies um, when you're on an alert status that um, you, you've basically violated, you know, copyrights and uh, sharing of information, um, and that um, some of these ISPs uh, may put you through an online tutorial and even slow down your internet speed as a penalty. So there's a number of phased um, levels of, of penalty. Um, it's interesting, though, because some people have uh, raised the concern that, uh, you know, this could open the door to more, um, you know, legal action against uh, uh, customers, uh, people using the, the, the service. Um, and so it remains to be seen, you know, how that really plays out. And it probably will vary from uh, ISP to ISP. So I heard you mention the RIA. AA earlier. Can you elaborate a little bit for us on how this copyright alert system came about? Well, there was some legislation that, uh, you know, wasn't very successful in, co in going through a bit earlier this year. So um, over the summer, uh, a number of the ISPs got together with um, the RIAA and the MPAA, um, and basically they came up with uh, this system that uh, it looks like they've had some success in, in getting some agreement on this. Um, and their intent, of course, is to crack down on the um, on file sharing and the things that are going on out there. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer seems to be their main target. Will this system be in effect on all Internet service providers, or is there a way around it? It doesn't appear that there is going to be a way around, you know, the, the, um, the obvious file sharing. Um, there are definitely workarounds for people that really want to share files and do this kind of thing. Um, you know, it's complex. There's VPN. It's not for the casual, casual user, if you will. Um, so you could use VPNs. You can use, you know, IP masking. You can, you can hide your IP in certain ways when you're doing the file sharing. Um, so there's a number of workarounds, but just not for the casual user. It's not quite there yet. Jill Lesser, the executive director of the Center for Copyright Information, describes the goal of the program with this statement. The hope is the casual user 
and the user that doesn't realize the implication of what they're doing will respond to the system and we'll see a decrease in the use of peer-to-peer -peer networks for copyright infringement and we'll see an increase in legal services. She also said if you continue to engage in copyright infringement you're not going to continue to get alerts. In our mind we're going to target consumers that respond to those alerts. The alerts stop after the last level and nothing else happens under the program. So John, it seems like they're missing the big picture here. Why target casual file sharers and ignore those who are causing damage on a much larger scale? Well, that that's because it's low hanging fruit. Um, I think what they're what they're looking at is um, getting those that are easily scared off. Um, you know, push them to more legitimate uh, methods of file sharing, um, buying content, and things like that. And they're largely unsophisticated in being able to hide their activities. So, uh, mm -hmm. the world's most famous BitTorrent site, the Pirate Bay, has switched its entire operation to the cloud. Provide us with a brief background on Pirate Bay. Why have they been targeted by authorities in the past? Well, they're the biggest uh, file sharing BitTorrent site on the internet. Uh, they've also been very uh, defiant uh, to the authorities. Um, they see themselves as um, uh, champions of uh, free speech, champions of you know uh, internet freedom. Um, so along those lines, they've been raided over the years. Um, you know they've shut down, they've come back. You know other sites have gone down. So um, you know they're they're very public. Uh, they're very big, and and they're uh, you know they're a phenomenon on the internet. Why is the pirate bay shifting to the cloud? Well, the same reasons why anybody would move to the cloud, um, you know, just uh, reducing costs, uh, better uptime, you know, better uh, infrastructure. It's not isolated to one place. Um, their product overall will be better. Um, they, they also have built in a, a number of things that uh, makes uh, the data secure about the people that are accessing their site um, and basically, you know, being impervious to. Um, you know, raiding by authorities uh, is another factor. Um, they can quickly fire up, you know, another site somewhere else. As part of their move to the cloud, the Pirate Bay is utilizing virtual machines. Can you explain the benefit of VMs to us? Well, that, that could take hours, days. Uh, there, there are uh, definitely whole events uh, dedicated to describing the benefits of, of VMs. But in this case, uh, what they're using it for is uh, for a bit of disaster recovery. So that, and that's the nature, the fluid nature of cloud computing is that, um, you know, they can take a system that was uh, taken down, shut down, lost for, um, you know, either a police raid or if it was shut down because of uh, some internet issue, you're able to fire it up somewhere else and, and get the, you know, the infrastructure back up and running uh, sometimes without any loss in, in downtime at all. The Pirate Bay didn't move everything to the cloud. Can you explain the reasoning behind that? They still have um, some elements of their infrastructure, um, transit routers that uh, point to the cloud. Uh, so these are basically like load balancers that uh, um, are diskless. Um, basically, nothing is stored locally completely in RAM, which means um, basically, all the information that they process are in volatile memory. If the systems are shut down, moved, well, A, they're encrypted, and B, that information is quickly lost. So it's it's all tuned for, you know, covert operations, and uh, so they keep that piece where, where they're at, and they can quickly fire that back up as well. This seems like a really savvy move for Pirate Bay, and in a lot of ways, it makes a police raid nearly impossible, as you mentioned, due to their new configuration. Do you think authorities will be able to find a way around this by implementing, implementing cloud regulations of some sort, or are sites like the Pirate Bay going to continue to be one step ahead? I think they're going to continue. I mean, they're, they're pretty savvy. They've got a, a number of... Uh, lawyers that have figured out a number of things on, on how to operate. They can open accounts. They can open accounts with cloud providers who are eager for business, uh, open for business, I'm sure. Um, they're not signing up as we are the Pirate Bay. We want to run servers on, on your cloud. Um, that's not how this is happening. So um, I think that uh, especially with this new tactic in place, uh, they're going to continue to grow. Um, they're going to continue to exist, and I, I don't see a, any type of regulation really restricting who that is unless, you know, there's a deep investigation when somebody signs up for cloud services or something like that beforehand, but, you know, who knows? 
Well, John, thanks so much for taking the time, and we'll talk with you again soon. Thank you very much. For all the latest in-depth coverage and breaking analysis on tech innovation, keep up to date with News Desk on SiliconANGLE TV.